Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to Marshall today. We are receiving our last presenter, and Emily Miller has her senior thesis named Wanderers. What's really exciting is she is a multimedia artist. Terry O'Day was her mentor, and as Emily wrote in her bio, I'd like to read one thing that just jumps out of my heart. She'd like to believe that the joyful exploration of the unknown can create a positive, active relationship with our world, encouraging the fearless seeing, seeking the dreaming that the characteristics of childhood and creativity through light, through darkness, sound, and touch, wanders creators an ambitious space with the freedom to enjoy instinctive exploration and experiential without judgment of failure or success. We receive you and may we enjoy. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia, and thank you, everyone, for coming. I'm excited to present my capstone project, Wanderers, which I've been working on for the last eight months. Wanderers is an interactive installation that addresses themes I've explored in my art for a long time. This was my first installation and my first interactive piece, and the most involved project I've ever produced. I'm going to begin with an overview of my past work and creative inspiration to show how this project came to be. I believe that curiosity and excitement come naturally before we learn to fear the unknown. I love environments like the deep ocean and outer space that are difficult for humans to explain and inhabit but draw an instinctive emotional response. Exploring and describing these environments involves crossing a border between the known and the unknown amid constant cycles of change. My artwork centers on representing this uncertainty with wonder and joy. My art practice is my personal connection to the beauty of exploring these mysterious environments. My work deals with the relationships between art and science and between nature and human structures. I use organic form, repetition, and light in my sculptures to explore those relationships. My past work has addressed these themes mostly by instinct, but developing the Wanderer's installation provided an opportunity for me to intentionally explore how they all fit together. Creativity begins with the freedom to wonder and experiment. This is the meeting place of innovative science and art. What we learn in the process of exploring the unknown can be as important as the final outcome for both artists and scientists. This is one of my favorite images from an ongoing series that I'm working on. It looks like a jellyfish, but it's actually a photogram of a watermelon slice. Oh. Creating a photogram is a bit like taking an x-ray. You shine the light directly through an object to reveal its internal structure. I love making photographs like this of fruit and vegetables because I'm always surprised by the outcome. The process reveals patterns and symmetry normally invisible to our eyes that tend to look like completely different natural forms. I've loved art, the natural sciences, and the diversity of human <coughs> cultures all my life. I'm fascinated by the complex living systems of individual plants, colonies of coral, schools of fish, and the larger than their relationship to the larger systems that control ocean currents and the formations of galaxies. My work deals with the placement of human systems and individuals within that network. I'm inspired by overlooked spaces and how we interact with and affect these unintentional environments. I focus on visible signs of the interactions between humans, the structures we build, and the natural world, and how these physical <coughs> relationships change with the passing of time. I love photographing rusted and overgrown <coughs> structures because it joins the seeming randomness of natural patterns with the intentionally organized forms of machinery. Although nature's part of these images seems chaotic, natural growth also creates structure and symmetry. The rust and growth shows how our work is always connected to nature and how that relationship is always evolving with our original intentions interacting with the forces of wind, water, and growth. I feel this ongoing balance between order and chaos, control and freedom, reflects the state of the whole world. My work is less about our specific positive or negative effects on the environment, and more about simply drawing attention to our existence as part of a larger system. 
Beauty is the way I interpret this constant exchange between human initiative and natural forces. My sculptures tend to repeat these two basic organic forms, spheres and, spheres and pillars. <coughs> For me, these non-specific organic forms feel familiar and unexpected at the same time, inviting curiosity and suggesting a positive encounter with the unknown. I wanted these sculptures to feel alive and mysterious. I prefer to leave surfaces bare and focus on the natural beauty of each material's color and texture. I love the physicality of working with hot glass and the exciting process of transforming a molten liquid into a smooth, transparent, solid form. Working with paper is more meditative and detail-oriented, but I enjoy the process just as much. I also love creating colonies, using groups of repeated forms that each have their own unique identities. Different arrangements of the forms can communicate entirely different meanings. Belonging, separation, loneliness, caring, and growth. The colony arrangements reflect human interactions and call attention to our dual status as individuals and as members of the community. For me, working with repeated forms raises the questions, how different are we from each other, how much the same, how important is our identity as individuals and as members of the community. I envision these sculpture colonies scattered naturally through a landscape or a gallery. I feel like formal arrangements on pedestals only, <coughs> only convey part of the message I'm trying to get across. Encountering these objects tucked into corners, mounted near the ceiling, or rising directly from the ground as a key element of surprise, oops, surprise and delight, creating the feeling of entering an unknown landscape. The environmental installations of Dale Chihuly and Andy Goldsworthy reflect many of the values and forms I use in my sculpture. Although their work draws from natural forms and harmonizes with the landscape, it's not meant to completely blend in. Their work presents the unexpected in a familiar environment, created with playfulness and positivity, encouraging curiosity and interest in the beauty of these unknown forms. Jihuly says about his installation work, I want my work to appear as though it came from nature, so if someone found it, they might think it belonged there. I love the idea of situating art in unexpected places, blurring the line between an art object and an environment. Andy Goldsworthy also speaks about his work in terms of the presence of nature, in human environments, and as part of human identity. I'm fascinated by the idea of a physical marker of human presence, and how we leave our impression on an environment. I started experimenting with using light in my sculptures to increase the feeling of encountering part of the living system. Darkness and light create the most basic separation between the known and the unknown. Darkness has a huge range of powerful emotional meaning. It can symbolize possibility and infinity, but also fear and death. It can be terrifying to step into the unknown, but fear is not the only way to approach something we don't understand. Curiosity, creativity, and joy can also arise from embracing the unknown. The blackness of the deep ocean and outer space is as beautiful and significant to me as the points of light and life that inhabit these environments. <laughs> By including light in my sculptures, I wanted to give the objects a sense of internal purpose and energy without providing a specific explanation of what that purpose might be. In a larger sense, I was asking, what is the purpose of life? I'm not sure there is an easy answer, and I enjoy creating work that raises the question without providing a solution. My early sculptures simply used light to symbolize life, but I realized after a few attempts that light and darkness was where I needed to go. Not only were the mysterious living forms important, but also the vast realm of uncertainty where they are found. That brings me to the Wanderer's installation. I've always thought of my sculptural work as part of an environment, so creating an installation was the natural next step for my capstone project. Wanderer's brings together all the elements I had explored in previous sculptures. Curiosity and wonder in exploring the unknown, science and art, the exchange between humans and our environment, using light, darkness, organic form, and repetition. I created a darkened space for the visitor to wander through, surrounded by mysterious and engaging objects that respond to our actions. Entering the darkened installation can create both a feeling of freedom because you're hidden from view, and a feeling of reluctance because you can't see everything around you. I considered touch, sound, and movement as part of creating an environment open to curiosity and exploration. The full experience of an object includes the way it feels when we pick it up, the way it sounds when we put it down, 
and the way our perspective changes from different points of view. In the darkness, your other senses are heightened, and weight, texture, and material become even more important than they are with traditional sculpture. Like glass and paper, clay is a material I love to work with. Most of the orbs in the installation are made of hand-thrown porcelain, which has a very specific feel and sound when touched. I created over 40 orbs for the installation, which all share the same basic shape, but each one was made to look and feel unique. Like a living environment, the Wanderer's installation is interactive and reacts to our presence, providing constant feedback about how its components are related to each other and to <laughs> us. Creating a responsive environment was one of the most challenging and rewarding aspects of this project for me, both technically and conceptually. At least half my time was spent building the environment and its pressure sensors to function in a lifelike, logical way that allowed room for freedom and creativity by visitors without leaving them feeling totally lost. I knew almost nothing about electronics and wiring when I started this project. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Dr. Andy Dawes in the physics department was incredibly helpful every step of the way. It was so exciting for me to be able to integrate science and art in this project thanks to his knowledge and support. After over 180 solder joints and more than 600 feet of wire, <laughs> I am amazed by how much can be accomplished with just my basic knowledge and excited by how much more there is to learn. Creating this installation was a very social, interdisciplinary process. This was very different from my normally solitary art practice. A lot of time was spent just figuring out how to attach two components together for the first time, or brainstorming common materials that I could creatively use as pieces for the environment. I worked with at least 10 professionals from a wide range of fields. My materials came from lumber yards, hardware stores, automotive stores, and event rental services. I tracked down sources for recycled wood, carpet, and cardboard, alongside researching porcelain and industrial quality glow pavement. It was exciting and challenging for me to go beyond my normal studio practice to build my sculptures into a larger environment. I love for people to physically interact with my work. It's important to me that my sculptures not feel too precious. The Wanderer's installation goes beyond creating appealing objects to constructing an environment built for interaction. I'm interested in the gallery setting where the standard rule is don't touch, because I feel it reflects a wider reluctance for people to engage and experiment in life. The Wanderer's installation aims to counteract that reluctance by providing a space for curiosity, play, and wonder. However, the gallery environment also adds a layer of separation from ordinary life, giving visitors an opportunity to think differently about their experience. Allowing visitors to interact with the artwork adds personal significance and meaning to each of their experiences. The Wanderer's installation presents the contradiction of off-limits art objects with the freedom to explore and interact. I believe that freedom to explore is the, curi is the cornerstone of curiosity and innovation. The Wanderer's installation is set up to provide a framework for enjoying <laughs> experimentation and facing the unknown with wonder and joy. I'm excited to see how each person experiences it differently. The exhibit opens at noon today in the Cohen Gallery in Scott Hall. I hope you will all join us there. other people into experiencing art? They, yeah, actually. Um, it's a sort of mini version of it. It's going to be in Blackfish Gallery in Portland in Somewhere. July. Yeah. Like, a very small version. So I don't think they're going to let me put in a dark room, so I'm going to have to figure out how to reconfigure it for that space, which is going to be really interesting, and I haven't even thought about it. I'm just thinking of this. It's not your problem for like two months. Well, <laughs> more like one month. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Emily, have you ever thought of um, Extending not only that your vessels are open, but putting flame or different elements of earth, wind, life 
with you know bringing more elemental in that its biz. And it was I just felt like fire having um, light coming in as you were standing with your feet picture. Which you will enjoy really the installation when you go to see it then. <laughs> <laughs> okay?